Hi, Ben Carpenter here. I'm going to talk to you about a new piece of published research which is touted as the next muscle building breakthrough in the sports supplement industry. So, muscle building breakthroughs are um, not that rare, but they're very rarely ever actually breakthroughs. It's companies kind of hyping their own product. This is different because this is published research which no one is actually selling yet. So people are getting very, very excited by a piece of research which is causing controversy rather than a supplement company which is just telling you their product is amazing. So the product in question is HMB, otherwise known as beta-hydroxy-beta-methyl-butyrate. This was sold, um, well, the research originally was a couple of decades ago in 1996, I think. Um, it was sold as a muscle builder. It was in a calcium form, so it was calcium HMB. The new research is on HMB FA, or beta hydroxy beta methyl butyrate free acid, which is the FA. Three grams of um, HMB FA yields more HMB than three grams of calcium HMB because there's calcium allotted within that three grams. But is it important to state that if you standardize the quantity of HMB between the two, you wouldn't necessarily get the same results? Um, I won't give you the graphs and things on that because it'd be really dull, but just take my word for that. It's due to absorption, etc. So here's the deal. This was a 12-week study. The results from this are very, very extreme, which is why it's caused so much controversy. So in 12 weeks by Jacob Wilson et al. There was a 7.4 kilogram increase in lean body mass and a 5.4 kilo decrease in fat mass. So let that sink in for a second. 12 weeks, 7.4 kilos of lean body mass, 5.4 kilos of fat mass dropped. That is why this is creating so much hype because it's such an extreme result. When Ergolog originally published an article on this, there's a website that looks at supplement research, they basically said they didn't believe it because it was too extreme. Um, a lot of people have said they don't believe it because it's too extreme. So what I'm going to do is go over um, the nitty gritty bits of the supplement research for the people out there who are slightly nerdy and they want to know the ins and outs. So. Um, Calcium HMB, when it was sold, um, the hype died down very quickly because it didn't really match the research. A lot of people said that they didn't notice anything from it. Um, there were The research on it was kind of hit and miss because there is research in untrained individuals, which everyone knows they're going to react differently to people that have been training for many years. It's the whole beginner gains variable. Um, there's some research that was that had no change in training protocol, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. That sounds like a good thing, but arguably one of the MOAs, the uh, mechanism of action of HMB, um, is through planned overreaching phases, which is what this study looked at. So if you gave it to someone who has a light training protocol, um, would they notice significant muscle gain from it? arguably not. Um, so yeah, reviews on calcium HMB were mixed. So the study, this is 12 weeks long. There was an eight week phase of uh, periodized resistance training, followed by a two week phase of overreaching, followed by a two week tapering phase. So the overreaching phase, if you're unaware of the term, view it as as intentional overtraining, um, followed by a backing off phase to allow for super compensation to take place. The reason why not changing the training program with calcium HMB before is perhaps not looking at the correct MOA is that in this study it showed that HMB free acid attenuated markers of muscle protein breakdown. So measured creatine kinase levels um, and during the overreaching phase the placebo group had a much uh, greater decrease in performance than HMB FA 
which basically means essentially if you're pushing your body really really hard that is arguably when HMB free acid has the greatest um, result in short let's keep it basic so this is probably the best design study that you're really likely to see on ingredients of this nature it is double blind placebo controlled randomized with nutritional intervention on resistance trained individuals so they are trying to make this as meticulous as possible I'm sure it was really expensive to study um, so here's the thing firstly it's placebo controlled so if you put someone through a hard training program on a supplement and they get a good result from it you claim that the, re the supplement caused that result but without a placebo group you don't know how much of it was a supplement and how much was a training program so two groups of people with identical training programs one took HMB FA one took the placebo so this is isolating what the HMB free acid can do versus the resistance training program alone secondly um, it's double blind so the people conducting the research didn't know which group was which this was a partly funded study by patent holders which a lot of people will always pick up on as a potential issue because they question whether the the research is reliable it's important to point that out um, I've read the notes on this um, essentially the double blind nature of it means that because the researchers don't know which group is which they can't coax one group to get greater results to influence the the outcome for, for their agenda so another plus for the point of the study um, it had nutritional intervention which of course you want the groups to be matched matched for nutrition you don't want one group consuming more protein than the other that's another compounding variable um, this honestly is one of the best design studies that that you're likely to see everyone I've seen online who's tried to pick apart faults in the study to be honest with you has failed um, there have been a lot of criticisms a lot of people trying to say why it wouldn't work etc etc and to be, to be honest with you it all boils down to them saying I don't believe it it's probably bullshit but they can't actually pick faults in the study because it's very very well designed um, for example one person said because Jacob Wilson hadn't published the testosterone readings the hormonal readings which were taken throughout the 12 weeks he thought that well he insinuated that one group was taking us up were also taking steroids and that's why the, the results were so good now to me honestly this is a little bit dumb because um, if you read the full text and not just the abstract it does say that people were excluded if they were taking any performance enhancing supplement so to insinuate that they're feeding someone steroids is well it's a big allegation let's just let's just leave it at that um, so long story short this as an ingredient has got one of the best clinical trials on it the outcome is very very extreme there is a massive amount of lean muscle gain there is a massive amount of fat loss there are massive differences in strength that's measured in squat deadlift bench press um, wind gate tests vertical jump tests there are improvements across the board um, due to the way this works it's been shown to increase muscle muscle protein synthesis, inhibit muscle protein breakdown. Um, like I said before, they measured creatine kinase levels throughout the study. So arguably, it's going to work for people who are really pushing the limits on what they can do in the gym. I don't know how it would affect giving it to a regular Joe who's training biceps five times a week and, and texting their mates between sets. Um, probably not as well but that's just my opinion so in short this is a very very exciting study it is right for people to be skeptical because the increase is so significant however the study is very very well designed and if I'm honest Jacob Wilson has held up to scrutiny when people have tried to pick 
holes in his study, which I give him kudos for. Um, this is not on the market yet. There are no reviews, there is no real world feedback. I'm just giving you this um, information as it comes in. Um, I have messaged someone from a company who is planning to sell it, which is Muscle Tech, and asked if I could purchase it through him so I could get an early bottle. Um, because then if it's good, I can leave a review and essentially feedback to you whether it, whether it works or not, whether it lives up to the hype. But, sceptical or not, the research on it does look legitimate. It is very meticulous and very well carried out. So it's right for people to be sceptical, but I would recommend reading the entire research paper first because this is a very, very hard training program, especially the overreaching phase. So trying to conclude that anyone can put on 7.4 kilos of lean body mass. Remember that glycogen, muscle glycogen can be part of that. Um, th that would be false. This is something that you would arguably only benefit from when you are really pushing the limits of what you can recover from. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions, please feel free to comment on my Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash Ben Carpenter personal training or my Twitter page, which is BDC Carpenter. And thank you for watching. Bye.